No, skepticism is awesome. There it's you like go. A, <laughs> it's a superpower. It's like you can see the matrix code. Thank you very much for joining us, ladies and gentlemen, here on the Skept Track today. We are about to start a new panel, and this one is moderated by Bob Laskowitz. We are going to be looking at the truth behind conspiracy theories. So, ladies and gentlemen, put your hands together for Bob Laskowitz. You know, they're recording this, so this is, you know... Yeah, bad thing. Conspiracy, conspiracy. Yeah, yeah. Well, they do, this is this, what they don't want you to hear. Right. <laughs> right. Where do you want us to start? Um, yeah, if you guys could give your, 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 yeah, your names and affiliations, we'd be great. Okay, starting it. Okay, better. Um, give your names and affiliations. Okay, starting from this thing. Can you hear me? Yes? No. 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 Testing, 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 ah, testing yeah. now. Hi, I'm Kylie Sturgis of the Token Skeptic Podcast. I am a religious education teacher who married her dungeon master. Uh, the reason... <laughs> Hardcore, and it just gets better from there. I'm going to tell you. Woo! Uh, the reason why I'm here is because my Masters of Education thesis uh, had a little look at conspiracy theories in relation to paranormal beliefs. So that was the focus of a 2008 study done, and it ended up becoming my Masters thesis degree. Uh, I'm Tom Lolis. I also teach at Georgia Tech. Uh, I've been uh, researching conspiracy theories for a number of years now. I've had lots of fun as a kind of uh, conspiracy theory narc going to... Uh, I lived in Los Angeles for a while, so I got to... which is called Central, right? So um, I got to see a lot of stuff firsthand, which was illuminating. And uh, hopefully we'll uh, talk about it today. Um, my name is Benjamin Radford. I'm deputy editor of the Skeptical Inquirer Science Magazine, and I'm a research fellow with the Committee for Skeptical Inquiry. Uh, I've written six books now, some of them touching on conspiracies, and uh, the, the bigger part of my work uh, with CSI is doing investigations. And I, I've written about conspiracies and sort of tried to debunk a, a handful of them whenever they come up. The, one of the most recent ones I did was um, when uh, the, the, the stories were coming up that Obama was a Muslim. And, and I got to ask, well, can you write about this? I'm like, really? Really? I have to address this? But so anyway, I, I, I did some of that. So that's, that's where I come into it. Excellent. Um, so just to, to start off, we can you know, kind of define a, a conspiracy uh, loosely as a fairly small number of people doing very, very naughty things in secret. Um, uh, often the, the, uh, the scope of their influence far exceeds uh, realistic capacity to do what they're doing. Um, and a, a scholar by the name of Michael Barkun has done – well, he's read a lot of really, really horrid stuff, uh, so you don't have to, uh, in his book, The Culture of Conspiracy. And he was able to – you know, conspiracies can, can uh, incorporate uh, anything from a thousand-year-old religions that are thought to have been lost but are just gone underground uh, to alien space brothers and interdimensional beings. Um, and a, a wonderful one that I, I hope Tom's going to talk about, uh, where the moon is is not just hollow, but it goes places. I can go there. Yeah. Yeah. And uh, so, like, how do you begin to systematize this this huge amount of material? Um, as someone who does, you know, English, I'm an English teacher. Um, what strikes me is is the plots that are being carried out and the plots seem to be remarkably similar over and over uh, now he he's come up with a with a, a fairly handy but it's not ironclad cl classification system that it, it's useful when thinking about these he, he he's the, the first category is a uh, an event conspiracy which is a one-off thing like the assassination of JFK right um, the second type is, is 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 broader it's a systemic conspiracy um, usually the, the, the goals are a little bit broader, often involve control over a geographical or political region. Um, and, you know, you often see things like the, and that could exp 
extend to the whole world. Um, so like uh, Jesuits are conspiring um, to bring about the next Antichrist. Is there, there wasn't one before, was there? No, bring about the Antichrist. Um, or, the, or the Masons are seeking to control the world or, or, or whatever. Um, and then there's the, the super conspiracy. And the super conspiracy is where you have these nested hierarchies of control and they become very elaborate and all-consuming. Um, and I think that someone like uh, David Icke, uh, uh, who sees behind every new you know, conspirator, yet someone else pulling their strings, and there just seems to be an infinite regress. Um, he seems to be unable to not see conspiracies. Um, and this is very useful. Now, none of these, you know, you can have a JFK, uh, an explanation for JFK inside a, uh, let's say, a, a super conspiracy of the Ikean type. Um, and so the, the distinctions, they bleed a little bit into one another. Um, but you do see a lot of common elements. And I don't want to say this is my favorite conspiracy because it's the Protocols of the Elders of Zion. However, it's extremely useful to understand most, as, as far as I can tell, most modern conspiracy theories. Um, in it, you see distilled uh, uh, many of the elements that have persisted uh, in all these different uh, forms. And if, uh, a guy by the name of Chip Burlett, um, who works with a, a think tank where he tracks hate groups, um, kind of the the protocols have been recycled and reused and rewritten and ironically plagiarized and, uh, by <laughs> you know by all sorts of people they're originally you know plagiarism um, or forgeries not everybody maybe not everybody knows what the protocols are so maybe you could just oh um, yeah the, the protocols of the elders of Zion are a uh, a forgery a known forgery we know exactly where the the, the original source material came from I believe they're French sources um, I'm sorry? French sources plagiarized by the Soviets at that time? Uh, by the, the Tsarists. Um, so it, 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 the, the Jews have never had it easy, honestly. Uh, and they were, they were a scapegoat in Tsarist Russia, and as there were challenges to the regime there, the secret police force of the Tsar uh, had these protocols uh, written up. Um, and I, did they, were they released through France? Uh, published in French first, or were they? I think they were. Huh? I don't know. Anyway. Translate. Oh, well, but um, and they became the kind of what you have is a, a bunch of evil elders or rabbis um, who are meeting uh, to uh, talk about how the war against all things good is going, right? And the, the only thing that they're missing are you know the mustaches you know t twirling evilly you know um, and it's really over the top and it's hard to imagine that people could take it seriously and in fact what they were plagiarizing from was a, a, a dialogue between characters in hell like was it Montesquieu and Napoleon the third in hell and it was a satire but people took this seriously um, and it within a year by 1923 it had been thoroughly debunked and they knew exactly where it came from um, but it has had remarkably strong legs, and it keeps going even today. And the the the, uh, the elements that you see in all the different versions, Chip Burlett distilled down to to these. Um, Jews are behind a plan for global conquest. Jews work through Masonic lodges. Uh, Jews use liberalism to weaken church and state. Jews control the press. Jews work through radicals and revolutionaries. Jews manipulate the economy, especially through banking monopolies and the power of gold. Uh, Jews encourage issuing paper currency not tied to the gold standard. Jews promote financial speculation and use of credit. Jews replace traditional education, uh, educational curricula to discourage independent thinking. Jews encourage immorality among Christian youth. Jews use intellectuals to confuse people. Ooh. I know. Um, Jews control puppet governments both through, both through secret uh, allies and by blackmailing elected officials. Jews weaken laws through uh, liberal interpretations. And uh, Jews will suspend civil liberties during an emergency and then make 
the measure is permanent. I'm, I'm sorry, where the hell do they find the time? I know. Well, you know, you've got 12 tribes, so you can outsource it. And it like, no. Really I mean, it, right? especially when they live with inside the Earth's core, I mean, just the travel time is... Oh, it reduced you significantly. Know, right. Yeah. I mean, just yeah. the commute is, is ridiculous. Yeah. So. <laughs> but yeah, so, and, and it seems to me that you could, if you could use this almost as like a genetic blueprint for most conspiracy theories. Um, you just, in, in some cases, you just swap Jews for... Uh, Masons, or you swap Jews uh, for liberals, or you know neocons, or whoever that you happen to be demonizing. And, and of course, the problem is if the if the logic is bad for any of these other groups, uh, why is it suddenly valid when you're talking about, uh, you know, uh, for instance, liberals uh, or whatever? Um, so, uh, and so it's kind of like this ever mutating flu virus of stupid. You know, where it just keeps, yeah, <laughs> and it, it keeps swapping elements, and you see them combined and recombined. And some of this, you know, you see in, in Glenn Beck, the gold stuff, I think, is, is, is very big right now. Um, so um, to, to toss it out to the panel, what gives? <laughs> no. <laughs> so you want me to talk about, like, why, what is it about conspiracy theories that make them so attractive and, and, and make them seem so compelling to people? Um, because sometimes it's just farcical, but they really do seem to... Well, I, I know some, from some of the research that we have an argument about a sense of control. What we have here is a tendency towards uh, defying authority. We have a tendency towards neuroticism that has been demonstrated in a few papers. Uh, quite a lot of conspiracy theory analysis is still in its early days. Uh, when I first started writing the thesis in 2008, I found maybe about three papers. And uh, Matthew Dentith in uh, New Zealand is doing his PhD on conspiracy theories, and he has worked quite a long time, and it's only more recently that more and more papers have come out. I know of only one other paper besides um, the research that Martin and I have done, which looks at conspiracy theories and linking it to paranormal beliefs. Mm -hmm. uh, there is an unpublished paper by Chris French in the UK, and he's the head of the UK Skeptics, and that was essentially looking at whether or not people thought that mobile phones had technology wired into it in order to feed information to the government. Uh, considering the recent wiretapping uh, scandal over there and uh, the newspapers, I don't think it's a government they really have to start worrying about, quite frankly, more like the Daily Mail. So what we're seeing here is a tendency towards um, seeking control. Uh, one of the things that you mentioned in your definition in regards to suspicions of people, it's suspicions of groups of people. And so finding yourself a target and saying, okay, it's them, it's them to blame. Um, one book I recommend is uh, John Ronson's Them, which certainly mm. looks at the notion of there being groups out there that we should be suspicious of. So there's a few elements, mostly about neuroticism, mostly about authoritarianism, some research heading into schizotypal tendencies. Um, that's not schizophrenia tendencies, but schizotypal. You can certainly look that up, and there's a few elements in that in regards to leading towards being a, a conspiracy theory believer. But overall, it's, it's also finding yourself support, and that's where the internet becomes such a wonderful place in terms of finding other people out there who believe exactly the same way, and not only support, but build, and then seem to provide you with even more evidence to back up what you think. You know, the, 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 the ease with which the, the internet allows people to come into contact with one another and, and find people who believe what you believe. And this is, this is a more clinical uh, version of that. Um, uh, you know, now that we have cheap and easy to use uh, video editing software um, that, and, and YouTube as a means of distribution um, and cheap handy cams, what used to be, you know, take an entire studio full of people and can only be done in black and white and silent can now be done by a single person. Um, and paranoid schizophrenics have gotten their hands on this. And, and this is actually really interesting, um, that they have reached out. They've documented what they see. Look, these people are coming down the street looking at me. It's a, it, they call it gang stalking. Um, and, and look, just within, on a, on a Tuesday afternoon, these people are coming by. And somehow they, they sense that it's all directed at them. And they're just counting the people walking down the street. But they've reached out to other people who feel that they're being harassed by huge numbers of people. And one of the signs of, of mental illness is, is that you become alienated and no longer have meaningful relationships. So these people have reached out and they're making 
meaningful relationships and organizing to fight the gang stalkers. Um, but at the same time, they're reinforcing this delusional belief. So, I mean, there yeah. is the act. Yeah. I was going to say, that that's one thing that I find interesting looking at the psychology of it is that um, typically these are people who who they see a, a hidden hand behind everything. Mm -hmm. they, they don't accept coincidences. Uh, they don't accept that things just happen, that certain groups of people happen to walk down the street at that time. Or maybe the, you know, the, the, that's when the, the supermarket opens, whatever else. And so they see, they're, they're looking for patterns and things. They're trying to go, oh, what, what am I missing? What, what hidden information am I getting? Uh, am I not getting? And, and why can't I get it? And when, when you talk to people about, well, well why, why do you think that, why do you think there's a conspiracy? Oftentimes, they will admit that they can't prove it. I mean, like, yeah, I mean, you know, take, take you know, the 9-11 or the, the moon hoax, whatever else. They'll say, well, I can't prove it, but, but, but you know, and why can't I prove it? It's not because uh, it's wrong, which <laughs> is typically my answer. They can't prove it because someone is hiding the information. The information's out there. It exists, they believe. But someone is actively trying to keep them from the information, that final piece, uh, the, the, the Roswell crash, the aliens, the Area 51, the final smoking gun that would put, put the whole thing together. It, I think they'll tell you that they have it. I mean, often they will. I mean, with the 9-11, uh, mm. uh, Building 7 conspiracy, mm -hmm. they tell you that they have, and they, they keep saying, it's irrefutable evidence, you know, irrefutable mm -hmm. proof. Scientists don't talk like that. You know, like they could potentially falsify it. We could come up with another explanation for this pinch of dust that you're putting up against the collective, the collected uh, uh, work of hundreds of people and thousands of interviews about exactly what happened. That this pinch of dust that you think has magic dust, fairy dust in it, nanothermite, which has never been used to bring down a building, um, you know, um, I guess there's this. Um, in a lot of things, they will just come out and say, "We have the evidence. Why aren't you listening?" Uh, in, my, in my experience, the, they'll they'll say that about specific claims. I mean, I, I've never met. I mean, maybe maybe you have. I've never met someone who says that I have all the evidence about 9/11. I'll have people say, "Well, the, the, they they nitpick, they cherry pick. They say, well, you know, if you look at you know this particular claim, or you know, they look at the Pentagon, and they'll they'll focus on these little tiny anomalies, and they'll point to these anomalies as proof <coughs> that if you just look at this one thing, then it explains everything else." And the way I usually ask people, I say, well, what do you think happened? I mean, you, they're so busy pointing holes in the evidence. Well, here's the official story. Here's where all these things are wrong. And sometimes I've just said, what do you think happened? Who? I want to hear your story. Who, who exactly do you think put this stuff in there? Where do you think the, 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 uh, the explosives were put? Who put the why and for what purposes? And they're like, well, I don't know. Okay, so so you 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 you're poking holes in, in, in your imaginary holes in the official story, but they don't have an equally plausible scenario on their own because there's no evidence for that. I think also there's also um, it's, I think it's important for us to take into account that there is a there exists a kind of perverse pleasure in being the one who knows, right? Um, even <laughs> if n that knowledge is 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 horrifying, right? Mm -hmm. If you know that uh, the moon's a giant spaceship and <laughs> George Bush is a lizard. Um, I mean, if, if, and because you've seen the flicker, right? You saw the tongue dart out on CNN once or something like that. Um, you know, that, that's a horrible revelation, right? Mm -hmm. But it also gives you a kind of comfort, right? It gives you the, the, the as you're saying, the ability to create patterns, right? Um, Terrible things don't just happen. They happen because George Bush is an evil lizard, right? That's why they happen, right? Um, and has evil lizard friends. Um, and so, so the, the, there's a sense of, um, of comfort, even in the most uncomfortable of, of um, imagined circumstances. Um, yeah. yeah. And it's yeah. very simple, isn't it? You could just say, there we go, lizards. Nice. Right. right. Yeah. You get that walking down the street. Come on. You know? I mean, in, in, my, in, my, in my in my course, one of the questions I ask early on is let's let let's let's say hypothetically, uh, I knew I've got the document that says Bush did it. Right. Bush blew up the towers. Um, I have a video that's not faked of him with his finger on the detonator. Right. And would if if I were to have this information, would you want it? 
right? And so would you really want to know that? And the, usually you'll get, a, you'll get opinions either way. Um, it's usually not uniform, but there is a, a large percentage of, of students who, who want to know, right? And for good reasons. Um, but what will you do with that information once you have it, right? Um, if it were to exist, which it doesn't. Um, yeah. um, and something that, 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 that's really interesting to me is, uh, well, there is, is the matter of expertise mm -hmm. um, and the methods by which people go about researching and proving these conspiracy theories to themselves and hopefully to, you know, to the, a wider public, um, where they will, you know, 9-11, or not 9-11, a JFK conspiracist can tell you more utterly irrelevant details about what was going on in Dallas that day um, uh, to such a point you'll never win an argument with them. They, they have all of their information which they can just throw at you in waves after waves after waves. Um, and and the, they, they often kind of resort to the, 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 the people who should know better, the scholars, the historians, the journalists – are actually somehow complicit in it. In, in, uh, that, of course, if you do your your, your homework, you'll you'll come to the to the answer that it was you know there were multiple shooters, um, and so just even the very lack of evidence itself becomes positive evidence for the claim, mm -hmm. which is a real bitch when you're trying to argue it. Um, but um, yes, yeah, so um, has anyone here on this this panel ever? been seduced by conspiracy. I, I, I honestly don't know. Has anyone here ever had a conspiracy theory that they, or yeah, even out in the, how many people here have believed and switched from a conspiracy theory? One, two, and okay, so yeah, they're popping up every, yeah, yeah. Hmm. Um, I found it interesting that you talked about the role of experts. Um, one study that came out, uh, this is probably more relevant to me because a website I know of called the Millennium Project, which is run by an Australian, uh, he looks at vaccination claims. Mm -hmm. And there was a study done very recently on 25 websites and they tried to see what particular themes were coming out over time and compared it to earlier websites and so what trends are coming forth in terms of anti-vaccination claims online. And they found that about 84% of the sites uh, mentioned the sub-theme of conspiracy. Uh, a distinct distrust of authority, so you get the sort of, you know, anti-authoritarianism, oh, yeah. neuroticism mm -hmm. link there. And two new themes that they found had emerged, and one was um, the epidemic threat of H1N1 was manufactured, and that so, and they started to have more strength in so-called experts against vaccination. So they started saying, okay, well, there's these claims and so forth that are coming out there. Well, it so happens that we've got a new expert and he's the one who's going to stand for us and he has qualifications that are relevant, and rather like what Eugenie Scott was saying about how there's an equal and opposite PhD for every PhD that's saying that this is complete and utter garbage and this is him. And he's going to be standing up for this particular conspiracy. So that was something that they noticed online as, again, we started mentioning about the power of the internet in terms of perpetuating conspiracy theories. I, I think one thing I've noticed is that, uh, that oftentimes conspiracy theorists will, will compartmentalize their information. I remember talking to one guy who was a 9-11 conspiracy theorist and he'd read all the stuff, he'd read, you know, he was, he was uh, conversant with, the, with all the stuff on, on the various websites. And um, and as we were talking, he, he also mentioned that he, he was a big fan of George Bush's. And I said, well, uh, I mean, a big, <laughs> a big part of the conspiracy is that the American government, that, was, that Bush was in charge, so wouldn't that mean that Bush is behind it? And it was weird because he'd never connected those two. Yeah. I'm like... You're, you're a big Bush fan, and damn the government. And it was interesting because because what I, what I what I realized was that was that he he had he had channeled this this distrust of authority and distrust of the government was was generalized, and he he had Bush over here who was an awesome guy, you know, you know he's the decider, and then <laughs> and then we had and then and then he had the, the his longstanding distrust of the government, and the fact that those two were in, in complete well, opposition to each other. He it, it, he it hadn't occurred to me. Well, was like, George Bush maybe an unwitting pawn? Yeah, you know, he well, wasn't there you really go. in charge. Cheney with the there you go. Oh. 
He was too brilliant for his own good. Right? Uh, you asked about favorite conspiracy theories. Um, I remember reading an account of a fellow in my town who said that he did believe that man had got to the moon, but he didn't believe, oh, but he believed that they used alien technology to get there. Well, that's how Hitler got there. <laughs> oh, oh yeah. okay. Well, that explains it. Well, there you go. I, I, I think this, this issue of, di of general distrust is, is really important to keep in mind um, when we're looking at these conspiracy theories uh, because it's a distrust that I think a lot of us share, even though we don't necessarily share the, the theories that, um, that result, right? Um, we've all seen the numbers on Congress. Congress sucks, right? I mean, we're, what is it, 13% approval, something like that? It's, it's pathetic. On the high end, yeah. Uh, yeah. Um, it, so it's, it's easy to take these, you know, provable real-world circumstances and, and apply them to things that we can't prove um, because we all, sh we all share this kind of general dis-ease, right? We, we're, most of us aren't making the money that we'd like to right now. Most of us uh, aren't thrilled with the fact that we're at war with two countries. Um, you know, I, I voted for Obama. Gitmo's still open. So there's a conspiracy, right? He lied to me, right? Um, and, and, and so everything else must be true. I mean, there's, for example, I'll, I'll, I'll make this short, but the, there's, a, there's a myth going on about FEMA camps, right? Glenn Beck jumped on this too, right? That um, FEMA was, was ready with all these coffins and death camps, and they were going to round us all up as soon as uh, martial law um, was was ordered by Obama, I guess. I don't know. Um, doesn't seem the type. Whatever. Um, and uh, it's always those the quiet ones, right? Um, so, so what we need, I think, bear in mind is that okay, that's that's sort of ridiculous. But where, where does where do those where does that think, kind of thinking come from aside from paranoid schizophrenics? Hmm. Not not to discount yeah. that, but certainly that happens too. Um, but in addition. I mean, you know, we, in our own recent history, right, in the early, in the 40s, uh, you know, after the bombing of Pearl Harbor, right, we interred Japanese Americans, right? We didn't have death camps, mm -hmm. but we did have internment camps, right? And so there, there are sort of real world phenomena that serve as springboards for much scarier and unreal phenomena. And, well, and like um, the, the syphilis testing and then yes, suddenly right. we say, oh, okay, well, right. therefore to, to AIDS must have right. been created on purpose inside exactly. the laboratory. Right. So yeah. there's a, 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 often a nugget of truth that gets spun out and teased out into this much larger, elaborate, ongoing Conspiracy. The, the, the interesting thing about the, the, the Japanese internment camps, that one of the more recent versions of that uh, I've heard, uh, was that they're actually going to reopen the exact same camps. So it's like not only metaphorical, Ooh. but also literal. You know, that yeah. it's, yeah, so. They're dusting them off or something. Yeah. Well, I, I remember I, I, was, I did a piece for Discovery News um, on, on Obama conspiracies. Uh, but both the birth certificate and and also um, the fact he was a Muslim, and uh, it was because it, it was just amazing to me that anybody, anybody would think that Obama is Muslim. I, I've 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 been to Muslim countries. I've studied uh, a lot about Islam, and and I so I wrote a piece for Discovery explaining how we know that Obama is not a Muslim. Uh, we could start by noting that at the time it was actually during Ramadan, and during Ramadan is when uh, Muslims fast uh, during the daytime, and Obama was seen eating lunch, as most of us do, except Muslims during Ramadan. And therefore, he was not certainly following. Now, you could say he's a bad Muslim, I guess. I, OK, fine. He's a, he's, a, he's, a, he's a very, very poor Muslim, but he's still a Muslim. OK, what? So and I also pointed out that, of course, uh, Obama has repeatedly said that he's Christian. And that also goes against one of the five pillars of Islam, uh, professing. And, and I went on and on. And it was fascinating, because I thought I had put together a fairly self-evident list of reasons why it was pretty clear that Obama was not a Muslim. And uh, people wrote in, and they were just pissed off. They're like, well, you know, you're, you're, you know, wh why are you hiding the fact he's a Muslim? Like, <laughs> did you read the piece? I, 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 I thought this was pretty clear. It was, it was amazing. And then, I, anyway. I was um, personally hoping that the rumor would start that uh, Obama was, in fact, an indigenous Australian, because I'd get behind that. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> Go Australia, take over America, yes. Or, One or, president or, at a time. You know. <laughs> or possibly Zoroastrian or something, you know, who they just don't get any uh, publicity. Or, you well, know, there's a space <laughs> alien connection with, with oh, that yeah. one. Yeah. Is it, yeah. Oh, yeah. 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 Care to elaborate? Well, oh, sure. You can't just um, hang yeah. space I mean, aliens out there. Sorry. Not sorry. Um, for, for, for Zoroastrianism... Um, 
you know that that that's 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 been sort of bounced around in some of the Ike and Ike like uh, narratives. I, do, do you guys all know who David Ike is? Is he here? Are you here, <laughs> David? David Ike? In the back. Because um, I'm about to rip on you. I don't know. Um, da- David Ike is a guy who um, announced uh, on on B- on a BBC talk show that he was Jesus, and that didn't work out very well for him. Um, people didn't believe him. I, it was very obvious. I mean, he wore turquoise, so... Um, <laughs> right. Uh, so anyway, that didn't work out. He went underground for several years. He reemerged as a conspiracy theorist du jour, major, whatever, and, um, and came up with all these uh, theories that he largely copped from other people about uh, ancient aliens... Um, who have been maintained these bloodlines for thousands of years, if not tens of thousands, if not millions, um, and that you know every ruler, everyone who's put in place, you know Queen Elizabeth, um, uh, the Bush, the Bushes, the Kennedy family, you know, the the you know, the royals, of course, um, they're, they're all these family dynasties, and they are of course all of alien origin, um, perhaps reptilian. Um, <laughs> And, and uh, uh, this has taken off. This has gotten an amazing amount of press. He tours all over the world. He gives seven-hour PowerPoint presentations. That he makes ex- more than all of us combined. He makes combined. more than all of us combined. John yeah. Ronson writes about him. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and uh, it's, 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 it's kind of amazing. Um, if you do you know, a YouTube search or something for a reptilian shapeshifters, you know, and, uh, you'll get stuff with like 20 million hits. Right, um, and, and it's largely stemmed from uh, his books, which uh, which were I think written on uh, uh, probably I don't know binges of narcotics and, and many hours of V. I'm not really sure what happened there, but um, but allegedly, nonetheless, no, I mean they've taken yeah. off, and there's all these sort of like suburbanites all over the world who who flock to these shows and um, and say, "Will you sign my lizard book?" Some of the information gets um, translated and adopted by other people. The Australian Vaccination Network, for example, found mm. one of his papers that was about anti-vaccination, and they they obviously didn't read it very clearly because they took elements of it and said, "Oh, this looks like a fan." They found it on a website. This looks like fantastic support and so forth. And then when it was sort of quietly pointed out to them by anti-AVN, because the AVN is a anti-vaccination group despite their name that sounds so alluring um, they started to backtrack a bit and said oh we, we really shouldn't be associating ourselves with conspiracy theorists you know like David Icke and it, the irony oh. just yeah and, and that's a that's a, a, a wonderful yeah. point that uh, people have accused me of, of conflating you know you know uh, moon hoax advocates and, and 9-11 truthers you know as, or people who believe in UFOs um, those people are crazy, they say. I do agree with them on, on, on that. I, I think they're, they're really, really wrong. Um, but they, they, they can't internalize it. It might possibly be them as well. You know, I'm, willing, I'm willing to be proven wrong at, at, at any time. You just bring me something you know, that I can put my hands on. Well, we you know? are pattern-seeking creatures, though, you see. Yeah. And there's a variety of things, as we said, that can contribute to feeling this way. And, I mean, all of us seek control in one way or another. I mean, uh, how many of the people who wrote, for example, Ben, about um, the Obama claim seem to you to be complete and utter crackpots or all so forth? I mean... And, and I think yeah. it's, there's something all. where the mind kind of... Uh, hates, a, hates a vacuum, you know? Okay, that, that sounds weird. Um, but that if we have a, a, a gap in our knowledge, we, we naturally seek to to join the the the, uh, the edges of the gap. Try to fill it in with something. Yeah, right. and, and project something onto it. So where you have something like an Area 51, uh, where there are actual real secrets going on, um, you know, you have this big question mark, and people project whatever uh, they want to on it. Um, and sometimes in the absence of another explanation, they'll just glom on to, yeah, they're reverse engineering uh, UFOs. 
Um, and, and that's actually interesting is to sort of see the, the areas of the, 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 the paranormal that do involve conspiracies because not all of them do. Mm -hmm. um, I've been accused of, of uh, being parts of conspiracies routinely. Um, Same here. Uh, Mo yeah. Mo yeah, I mean, probably all of us have at some point. I, Who's uh, really behind Dragon Con? Yeah, really. Jedi's. What's, what's Jedi's. going on with that guy? <laughs> you know, it, it's, it's amazing. Like, for example, when, when I, oh, I do columns for Discovery News, and it, if I do a column that, that debunks a UFO, uh, a UFO video, then I'm part of the conspiracy to cover it up. I, I'm, I'm, on, I'm being paid by NASA or somebody. If I write a piece about homeopathy... And I point out that there's no way that homeopathy can work just using the basic physics of it, that you know, by the time you've diluted this thing so far, so far, th th there's no active ingredient in it. I point this out. Uh, I am accused of being part of big pharma, right? And so, so they always, whatever category that I'm writing about or I'm, I'm debunking, uh, they, they come back and, well, you know, the, the, the only reason that you're writing that is because you're part of it. Or maybe I've done the research. Or, you know, I mean, it, the, but there's, it's interesting because the, the mindset is the reason you don't agree with me is because you haven't done the research. If, if you knew, if you read the stuff that I read, if you read that went to these wacko websites, then you would know. And the only reason that you're putting forth this stuff is because you have some hidden agenda. And, uh, it's, and again, same with like um, Alt-Med is, is massive with that. Like yeah. Kevin Trudeau, Natural Cures, they, they don't want you to know about. Oh, yeah. Really, really convicted felon, Kevin Trudeau. Okay, um, I, I just, I, I mean, that's and that's part of it. Is they go, well, well, you know, you know, the, the doctors don't really want to, you know, make you better because they make money when you're sick. Mm -hmm. Really, <laughs> is is that and, and and really, what a sad worldview that is. If you really believe that, if you really believe the doctors don't really want to help you out because they're making money off you. It, and what really hurts about that is that. People who believe that are then open, maybe they're just predisposed, I don't know, to, to being taken advantage of by people who really don't give two dams about them. Um, and well, it, maybe they do care and they're just completely misguided. You know, It's hard to say whether or not Mike Adams really believes everything that he puts up on his, his uh, what's it, natural news website. He spins off into conspiracy theory all the time. Um, but that that... You're afraid of being, uh, how do you say, uh, um, they accuse people who, who advocate, you know, science-based medicine of just blindly following along while they blindly follow along behind some guy with uh, magic powder, you know, um, and that's really quite depressing. And that, that scenario you're raising would work in the reverse. If you were to write an article uh, outing Area 51, and, and, and pointing to evidence that aliens did in fact exist there and were being tested on or were testing us or, or whatever, um, then you would get a conspiracy theorist who would tell you that you're making up a story about Area 51 because you're trying to cover up the real alien invasion which is happening somewhere else. The disinformation, yeah. Right, so you're still... You can't, a, you can't win. You're still a disinfo agent no matter what you say. Um, but I, th I think something else that's just sort of striking me as we're up, up here on, the, on this panel is... is, is I guess as an English person, I'm attuned to language. And so it's very interesting to me how we're all sort of adopting the language of the conspiracy theorists to talk about. The, like we're saying they, them, yeah, them. right? Yeah. Like we can we, just as easily right. be us in a different circumstances. Right. And I, I think it's sort of demonstrative of the way in which we haven't really, like you're saying, the discourse is in its infancy, mm. right? We haven't really developed the tools yet. Um, we're working on it, right? But we, but we haven't yet uh, come to a point in which we can lay out our thinking in, at least, at least linguistically, in, in a way that um, doesn't create this kind of funhouse mirror of, of the conspiracy theorists, you know, looking at us and us looking at them, right? Yeah. I I have a question. When does it cross over to being harmful? Because um, in my research that I did, one of the survey questions was, we should be suspicious of the motivations of those who try to restrict our access to guns. Being suspicious is one thing. Actually stockpiling the buggers and then proceeding to do something with them is quite different. Yeah. When do you guys think that the line should be drawn? Oh, damn you, Kylie. I know. <laughs> no, uh, <laughs> Who told you to say that? Yeah. You know, there, there's something about... Um, there are a lot of people out there who are very impassioned 
they, 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 they feel very strongly and they want to contribute to the world. They want to contribute to a democracy. Um, they want to be uh, uh, engaged citizens and they're going out and they're standing on street corners saying, look at Building 7, you know? And it's it's such a titanic waste of enthusiasm to see them going down this utterly, utterly fruitless non-starter of a road. Um, that's I, I find that the, the number of, of hours – think of if, if they could get all the time they spend watching t- YouTube videos back, you know, like a, a massive amount of, of time has gone into this project and it's all-consuming and uh, – I don't know. I guess when the, when 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 you start to, I guess, isolate yourself from society and just kind of break off and become an echo chamber. I guess that's when it becomes unhealthy. Yeah, I, I would agree with that. I mean, I I think your point is well taken about just the the enormous amount of, of wasted potential, the mm-hmm. time that people spend researching and rehashing and learning all the minutia details about you know the, all, you know reading the sites and you know, just. Getting so involved in this because they think they're right. They think that everyone else is blind. Everyone else hasn't seen what they've seen. And if you just think about it, if they'd spent that time helping educate people, I mean, just do, do something with that time. I mean, it, it's taking a, a class God. in physics, you know? I mean, that would help a lot of people in the 9 11 movement. Um, well, and I think for, for my, to answer your question, to my mind, the, the real harm comes in. Uh, I mean, if someone wants to believe that we didn't land on the moon, I don't care. Mm-hmm. Believe whatever you. I, doesn't bother me at all. If that's really what you want to, you know, hang your hat on. But if someone doesn't take, uh, someone doesn't, you know, who has cancer or something doesn't take proven medicine because it's part of a conspiracy. It would be because you know, well, they don't want you to know about this. Someone takes a natural cure. Someone's busy buying Kevin Trudeau's crap rather than going yeah. to a real doctor. That's a problem, and that that can kill people, and it has. Right. I, and, and anti-vaccination being a perfect example. Yeah, I agree. And, and David Icke was also on the don't vac- vaccinate your kids yeah. kick uh, not long ago. He said that was sort of the worst thing you could possibly do to your children. Mm-hmm. And somebody listened, right? And, and to what consequence, who knows? Um, so, yeah, I, I agree that, that that is where things certainly get dangerous. And also, you know, it gets bad when somebody picks up a gun and shoots somebody That's with it. That's pretty bad. Unfortunate. Yeah. And... Um, and, and, and it's, you know, it's very, you know, I, I gave a, a public lecture a while ago on, on conspiracy theories, and um, it was, it was, the tone was something along these lines of, of explaining, you know, how they operate and what some of the dangers are, and I had a guy come up to me afterwards and say something along the lines of, um, you know, I really don't know how to, just, I didn't even know about most of these conspiracy theories, but just the fact that you presented them and made me think about them makes me think I need to go and arm up. Right, so <laughs> even in presenting them as a negative, right, and in, in just just in getting the the stories out there and saying be cautious of them, can have the reverse, yeah. right? Um, and and so clearly that's where the thinking gets dangerous, where, where you know? repetition becomes persuasive in and of itself. Exactly. Um, and I guess at this point we'd real. This is a the type of topic I think that's very conducive to audience participation. So if you want in. You don't need to identify yourself if you're right. if you're concerned about that. Just give us your barcode. Yes, pay us in lizard yeah. <laughs> Well, no, don't worry. We already scanned your RFID yeah. chip on your. We already list. know who you are. Don't worry about it. The cake is a lie. Yeah. <laughs> we really want to hear more about the giant spaceship that is the moon. Uh, oh this, yes, this yes. Is <laughs> must. Yes, please. Uh, uh, well, the, God, it's, 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 you opened up that can of worms. Sorry, it's it's David Icke all the time today. Uh, oh. Yeah, th- this was this was in his last book, which I think is called "Human Race: Get Off Your Knees," something along those lines. And uh, Icke argued that um, the moon was a giant spaceship. It's hollow. Uh, the lizards live in it um, sometimes. Some when they're not here, looking like Obama, wearing yeah, right, George and uh, and they have this like. This vast mind ray uh, that uh, that zaps planet Earth. You know, one zap hits the entire atmosphere, I guess, and uh, and it control. It makes us docile, right? It's uh, you know, it, it it makes us not protest. It makes us not take to the streets, etc. But yeah, I, it seems not to be working in the UK. Something about um, it, yeah. But uh, 
So, so, and, and when asked, when pressed on, on um, you know, even by sort of his own people, how did you come up with this, this theory? This, this one's kind of out there, even for you. Um, he said that it came to him in a vision, right? There so he kind go. of went back to the messianic, I am Jesus. He did a sort of full circle, you know, within the span of 20 years. Yeah. So do you think he's out and out crazy? Like, like, like the Canadians decided? Right, or? right. That's a great question. You know, I don't know. I find him totally unreadable. I don't know if he's completely yeah. insane, if he's a con man, if he's both. Yeah. I, I really don't know. Yeah. I, I wish I had an answer. I just want to follow up with one quick point about that, which is that it, it can be easy to overestimate uh, conspiracy theories and conspira- conspiracy theorists. Um, it, it, you, you can certainly go by how many books he sold, or you can go by how many people go to his seminars, or how many people you know, s- sign a petition to, to re-examine 9-11. But just because somebody contributes to something doesn't really mean that they wholeheartedly believe it. Uh, and it's important to, and, and plus, of course, the people who are a part of these, con- these conspiracy theories, it's to their advantage to say, you know, well, you know, there's thousands and thousands and 20,000 people are behind us. Well, it could be, you know, his, his brother in, in a basement. So, um, so it, it's important to, I mean, just when we're talking about this, to, to not overestimate that just because somebody you know, thinks that Obama is a Muslim or says that he might be Muslim, that doesn't really mean that they are certain that, that he's a, a practicing Muslim. So there's, there's, there's shades there. Next question. I am a lizard. Yeah. Um, uh, I have a, uh, a friend in the family. He's a friend of my dad who is a total conspiracy nutcase. He's not as bad as some of the people I've met. He's an intelligent person, you know, he, he's very uh, charismatic, but he just has this part of his brain that's just over here and just dances around in these little fantasy lands. And, um, all right, Bigfoot, sure, I'll, I'll just, I'll put that aside, because that's actually, like, okay, that can biologically happen. Because that's real. Yeah, <laughs> but, like, he brought up this one thing called harp. Are you guys aware of it? Oh, yeah. 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 Is Pamela Gay in the yep. movie? The foam was dripping from my lips yeah. as he was saying. I was like, yeah. Yeah, that doesn't make any sense. So if you could basically summarize that for the well, audience. Well, it, it, HARP is, uh, uh, I forget exactly what, it's, what the acronym is, is high for. Altitude. High altitude. Reach. Planetary. Conspiracy, Puppies. something, something. High, yeah. High and, altitude research project. Thank you, Wikipedia. Yay! And um, uh, what they're doing, I think they're studying the ionosphere, um, which is too high for uh, uh, balloons, uh, too low for to to sample directly by uh, the uh, low Earth orbit. So they have to bombard it uh, with. Yeah, um, and, and so uh, radio frequencies uh, and see what colors come back, you know, um, and to, and uh, uh, somehow it's 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 really remote in in Nowhereville, Alaska, um, and again, I think it's like one of these Area Fifty One things. Even though they have like an open house and a website and everything, you know, um, but some people think that that's where they're controlling the weather from, or where they're controlling the earthquakes from, or controlling both from by beaming it up into the air. Somehow that causes an earthquake, and it, you, you ask them to, to explain the science behind it, and yeah, they, they uh, yeah. it just does. Yeah, I'm certain that was a Superman plot at one point. Yeah, yeah. Well, they, they're that, very, the chemtrails. Yeah, it, it, someone was saying that you know conspiracy theorists they, they're uh, are always Bond villains running the world. You know, I don't um, know where they get the idea. Yeah, and he and, and he brought this up at my house. Yeah. Uh, right after Haiti was hit by uh, the earthquake. And, of course, I, it took me literally like five minutes on Wikipedia to realize, wait a minute. And then I started looking around and bouncing around. Yeah. And 30 minutes later, I come back and I just start like, ah. But these, these people are otherwise intelligent people yeah, usually. Yeah. And it's, it's hard. To, and I, I, it's very easy. It's kind of a dark humor to lapse in and say, wacko. You know, um, it, there's a lot of fear. There's a lot of anger. There's it, a lot of people are genuinely really upset. And, and I feel yeah. that there is this need to make sense of things that can't be rationalized. Haiti, a you know yeah. poor country, has got crap going on as is. It's got enough problems. And then an earthquake hits it. And it, all bad things happen. And then 
I think it's basically this need to make sense of the world that that innocent people aren't randomly slaughtered for no reason right. whatsoever, and you know there must be a reason why these people have been killed brutally in a natural disaster and it's this right. need yeah. to understand instead of just living in a chaotic universe so is your question about how to relate to him what is your question no, about yeah, how yeah, to relate yeah, to him yeah. i'm actually wondering if you have any vegemite yes i do uh come to the token skeptic podcast two o'clock on monday yay <laughs> that was the question <laughs> that was roundabout that was really yeah it's a goddamn conspiracy <laughs> okay hi uh, my question is has there ever been a time when a major conspiracy theory hit the mainstream media to the level of, say, oh, I don't know, the birther movement? Hide your groans. Um, and skeptics have successfully debunked it to the point that the conspiracy theory left mainstream, maybe never, maybe still stuck around the conspiracy theorists themselves, but left the mainstream while it was still relevant to the time of the story. I, vo- I vote for satanic panic for that one. Yeah. Um, mm-hmm. Which uh, was a uh, a kind of modern witch hunt in the 80s and and 90s in which uh, uh, an array of politicians, journalists, um, uh, and and legal operatives, uh, judges, policemen, became invested in this notion of of devil cults uh, all over America. We had occult crimes, police departments, that kind of thing. Um, convinced that uh, daycare centers in particular were a hub for uh, dark rituals. You would drop your kid off. They would be molested in horrible ways and satanic rituals. People would be sacrificed. And then you'd pick your kid up who, who had been brainwashed and remembered none of it and showed no symptoms of trauma. Um, and I, w- I mean, it sounds absurd, but a lot of people went to prison. Uh, there were a lot of court convictions. There were convictions. confessions, too. That's a lot of confessions. Yeah. Um, and, and finally, skeptics came in, and so but oh, it, yes, it took yeah. a long time. A lot of lives were were, right. were destroyed. In the process. Yeah, my favorite, um, in fact, my favorite example of a conspiracy theory theory battler is in fact at this conference, and his name is Michael Stackpole, and I'm talking about the pulling report. Mm, yeah, and that was the claim that Dungeons and Dragons, <coughs> of course, I'm biased, <laughs> <laughs> would lead to teen suicide. I don't and know. You know, Satanism. if you take all of these conspiracy stories, you can make great RPGs out of them. <laughs> Talk <laughs> to Michael have. Stackpole. Yeah. 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 Well, th- that's actually th- there's actually some some truth to that. Um, that you can make some great fictions out of these uh, these stories. Actually, it kind of goes the other way uh, mm. to the point where there's one guy who says that um, the aliens are, are putting the ideas for Star Trek plots into the heads of the Hollywood writers <laughs> in order to prepare us for what's actually going to happen. And and so, I'm, yeah, it's really elaborate. Uh, yeah, Ben's <laughs> laughing because he's thinking species and... Uh, yeah. <laughs> Chupacabra? Yeah. Thank you. Yeah. Hi, I'm one of them. Um, I'm Hi. a 9 11 truther. Um, I'm also a licensed professional engineer in the state of California, and my yeah. field of expertise is structures. Um, <clears throat> my, I have two questions. One for you, sir. Uh, you talked about the uh, that they're always saying they're hiding the information. Mm-hmm. And given that NIST has um, uh, basically refused to provide the information necessarily to do, do, to do a scientific analysis, why do you think that's not a valid complaint? Um, <clears throat> what information are you looking for? Uh, section properties, material constants, connection details, the minimum necessary to do a structural analysis of a building. Um, and the second question is, um, given that uh, uh, the 9-11 report, the, the commission report, the NIST report, and the FEMA reports are all statutorily barred from being used as evidence in courts of law, and they're legally nothing more than hearsay, um, why do you continue to repeat that nonsense when it can get you sued? I'm not worried about being sued. Yeah. Okay. Okay. What? Uh, what makes them statutorily barred from being admissible? I, I don't. I don't know about that. From, from okay, being it's Title Fifteen, United States Code, Title Fifteen, Section Two Eighty One A. I can read you the law. It basically says. It's all right. Okay. All right. I'm just. I'm just, so you don't. You don't care that you don't. You're not open to the possibility that. I, I, um, I haven't heard this before. Okay. I'm I understand. Than, I know I'm, it's a very very. I'm more than welcome point. to sure. to to. Uh, to look at it, sure. um, uh, but th- the way in which the the investigation was carried out, the NIST investigations, was that you had 
yeah, what, over a, a dozen different labs looking at smaller parts of the, the problems. I mean, it, it was released. It was vetted publicly. New ideas about how the, the structural, like, uh, for instance, um, debate over which technique should be used to, to gauge the uh, uh, damage caused by a fully loaded airliner hitting a, a, a an office building. You know, should we? How big should the the, the particle? Because it's very hard to comp to compute uh, fluid all at once. You break it down into smaller bits and you show how some, how big should those chunks be? You know, when you're doing and th th this was all held out in the open. All this was debated in the open. All this was decided by the scientific community. And when people don't acknowledge that there were f at least 15 uh, different laboratories who are analyzing this and then they actually managed to come to a consensus in the most thoroughly investigated uh, uh, engineering failure of all time what can I do with that uh, there's I, I understand and it's a very complicated issue but you need to understand that the government is not in, implied to be telling the truth when it makes a statement. There's a Supreme Court decision called Fraser v. Cup that allows the police to lie to um, to individuals. Um, you're, you're, you're saying that the the the, the, the report itself. Uh, hold on. You're saying that the engineers who did the analysis are you saying that they're lying? Um, I can't say that they're lying because they haven't said anything that's truthful. The, the difference is, <laughs> I, I'm I'm sorry. I'm trying to I'm trying to point out. I'm trying to point out the fact that nobody can talk about what is in the NIST reports without talk. You're repeating nonsense. Well, I'm curious. Well, what, what do you think happened? Uh, here's the issue. I, I truly don't know exactly okay. what happened, but I Thank would you. like to. I would like to use science to find out. But I'm not allowed to see the information to do the science. Okay. So, so, so you acknowledge that you don't know what happened. So, so, so you don't, don't, you don't exactly. have a better explanation than than, than the 9/11 report. I can report, speculate do you? if you want me to. But anybody can speculate. Do you have a better explanation than the 9/11 report? Than the 9/11 report? Uh, do you have a better explanation that fits the facts than the 9/11 report? I do have an explanation. I don't know if it's true. Do you have a better explanation that fits the facts than the 9/11 report? Yes. What is it? Um, well, you'd have to understand the motives of why the government would be involved in such. I'm not asking for motives. I'm okay. asking for Evidence. never mind. Oh, okay, sure. Never so mind. You, you want to know? I don't know whether it was. I don't know whether it was demo, explosive demolitions. I don't know if it was directed energy weapons. I don't because I haven't had the opportunity to find out what the information. We've only got enough time for one more question. Yeah. So, yeah. 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 Know how to follow up? Yeah. <laughs> Hello. Uh, You're our last question because we've only got two minutes, unfortunately. Yeah. Sorry okay. To people behind you. Well, there are a couple we'll things, uh, so let, let yeah. me try some up. Uh, you know, you all refer to the anti authoritarian event and, and uh, conspiracy theories. The, the guy a couple questions back mentioned that a lot of conspiracy theory, theory, uh, believers believe because they want to impose some order on the world. Uh, you know, like uh, 9 11 couldn't have happened because of systematic intelligence failures in the U.S. government or JFK couldn't have been shot because the Secret Service didn't do its job. So you come up with, you know, the belief that somewhere there's a group of people or a group of reptiles or somebody that, that, that's actually running things and knows what they're doing. Uh, so the world in that sense is, is a safer place than, or more orderly place than we might think. Same impulse gives it, you know, to religion. But I guess my question is, are, are, is there any psychological research being done on this, or is that still in its infancy as well? Or, uh, uh, you know, how are, how are people in this emerging field thinking about, you know, sort of the psychology of it and, you know, trying to figure I, it out? I think most, most of the research that I've seen that, that's recent has been in the realm of sociology. Uh, I haven't seen a lot of... I've seen work. some. It is starting yeah. to develop um, yeah. names that I can give you. If you head to my website at podblack.com, I just cut and paste a section of my thesis and posted it there, and it has a bunch of references. So you can see a few, and it's just a matter of keeping an eye on the literature. Yeah. We, we have one minute. One minute. Let's, one minute. let's see what we can do. Hello. My question had to do with where's the line between being skeptical about an event or a chain of events and it crossing over into a conspiracy theory. Yeah, I, I, I suspect that it, it's respecting the evidence. Um, that's that's my default. Um, if, if you're, you are, the difference between a, a good conspiracy, a conspiracy theory and a, uh, a well-researched argument uh, is that one starts 
with the evidence and then comes to a conclusion and one starts – the other starts with a conclusion and then you farm out – you know, you find evidence for it. Um, and I think that that's my answer. I'll, I'll just quickly add that all, of them t- all the conspiracy theorists call themselves skeptics. Yeah. Uh, they're global yeah. warming skeptics. I mean, it's, they're all skeptical. Vaccine Everyone's questioning. skeptics. R- yeah. r- vaccine skeptics. So that in and of itself doesn't mean much. Yeah. I agree with Bob. I'll keep it short. <laughs> <laughs> oh. Whee. All right. So we hit does that mean I win? Yeah. Yay, I win. win. It's a conspiracy. So, <laughs> so yep. Uh, thank you very much. This was uh, an invigorating debate. And thank you. Discussion. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh,